serger and we're using a baby lock 1034d and also just a regular domestic sewing machine and this is a singer heavy duty and the links for these machines will be in the description and next you're just going to need a standard hoodie and this hoodie right here is from unsatisfied it's a limited edition 333 and we actually teamed up with unsatisfied for this video and chris chan who's our good friend he started unsatisfied go check him out at unsatisfied.co and also go check out his youtube channel at chris chan he uploads awesome content now back to the diy we're using 5 16 eyelets they're a little bit bigger than normal magnetic snaps and this helps you take on and off that hood super easy or a different alternative it's just regular snaps but you can choose whatever ones you want to use for this video we will be using the magnetic and then you'll need some ribbing and lastly some cord or you can use a shoelace so first you're going to cut that hood off and first we're going to be converting this hoodie into a crew neck and if you wanted to skip ahead to where we actually have the hoodie converted then you can go ahead and do that and this is for someone that's just doing this with a standard crew neck we're just trying to add in a few more different customizations to the video to kind of make it very unique and show you that there's a lot of different options you can do with a hoodie or a crew neck so just make sure you're cutting close to that seam and it doesn't have to be perfect and then you're going to want to go ahead and measure around the entire neckline and ours came out to be about 23 inches and this will definitely vary based on the size hoodie you're using so go ahead and take your ribbing fold it in half and measure out about five inches less than what the neckline was so keep in mind this will be folded over so just make sure you cut it at the right width and we cut ours at about two inches to make up for seam allowance so next you're actually going to make the length cut and we're going to cut ours at about eight and that will give us a 16 inch neckline and that's about five inches shorter than what our neckline actually was and you do this because it's very stretchy and you want it to pull in that neckline so place the right sides together and just sew off that one edge and again if you don't have a serger you can totally use just a regular domestic sewing machine but make sure you're using a zigzag stitch because that will make up for the stretch with that edge sewn go ahead and place wrong sides together and sew all the way along the bottom this helps keep both sides together when you're sewing it onto the garment and again use a zigzag stitch if you don't have a serger So now that your neckline is ready, we're going to go ahead and attach it to the garment. So turn your hoodie inside out and place right sides together. And I like to light up the side seam with the seam on the neckline. And then stretch it to make sure it's going to stretch and fit nice and not pull too much. And again, zigzag stitch if you don't have surgery. But for this part, definitely take your time. Pull the neckline as you're going and just make sure it doesn't all bunch up at the end. You kind of want to make sure it's even as you're sewing it on. So this is basically how you turn a hoodie into a crew neck and we're going to add a top stitch on here to really make that edge look nice and as you can see we used white thread i recommend using the same color as the garment you're using it'll make it look more professional for top stitching it's super easy all you have to do is a straight stitch all the way around just fold over that inside seam and stitch all the way around the neckline there you have it you have a crew neck with a pocket on it. it's a super simple way to freshen up your wardrobe and next we're going to be adding on that lace front to really bring this piece to the next level so you're going to want to mark a line from the center of the neckline down to about midway maybe a little bit above mid kind of wherever you want it personally then about two inches out from the center on both sides mark down connecting at the center making a triangle and then once you're satisfied with the length, go ahead and cut out that triangle. Next, we're going to be adding the inside to that V. And you just want to cut out a rectangle that is bigger than what your triangle turned out to be. So that way you're covering all the edges. So lay it on the inside and then go ahead and pin that on when it's all nice and flat because you're going to be sewing around that V. And here we're adding some pids on and you don't need too many you just need some at the tops the middle and the bottom but if you need more go ahead and put as many as you need on you just want to make sure that inside piece does not move as you're sewing it we are using a straight stitch and we're doing about a quarter inch seam allowance from that edge and just sew both sides connecting at the bottom making that v definitely take your time make sure it's still all nice and flat as you're sewing
Next, flip your garment right side out and cut directly down the middle all the way to that point. And from the middle, go ahead and cut the inside excess fabric off right next to the seam as close as you can get. And also a snip up at the bottom. And this will allow you to fold those flaps to the inside of the garment. So fold both of those flaps in, flatten them out, make them really neat and lined up, and then go ahead and pin that. In this part, you definitely want to work with the fabric. Make sure it's all nice and flat around that corner and up towards the edges. And once you have it nice, go ahead and throw a few pins in there. And once you have your pins in, you're going to be sewing along the edge about an inch in all the way around. And this is why you want that rectangle of fabric that you added on the inside to be a little bit bigger. So that way you can catch that fabric when you sew an inch in all the way around. And go ahead and just take your time. If you want to use a magnetic guide, we're just kind of kind of eyeball it based on the presser foot. And just we're going to go slow all the way around that edge. And I recommend going a little bit past that point so you can make a nice flat bottom and then continue on the other side. And next you're going to want to add a little bit of security stitch at the bottom and it's just going to be a straight stitch right next to the other stitch that you did on the bottom. And once you have that stitch done, go ahead and flip it inside out and cut off the excess fabric on the inside. And then for the tops, you can either go ahead and tuck it in and stitch it, or you can just cut it off. And for the video, we're just gonna cut it off. And the next step is adding in your eyelets, and you can add in as many eyelets as you want, depending on the size eyelets you're using. And we're just evenly spacing them out, kind of seeing what works best, what looks the best, and we're going to mark them on both sides. And I recommend marking them on one side first and then just kind of lining them up and doing the other side. Then bring the sides close together and make sure they all line up. And then for these bigger ones, if you don't have a punch, just go ahead and snip out little holes and then make sure your eyelets fit. Add on your backing to the eyelet if you're using a double-sided eyelet and then go ahead and punch those in. And this is a super little easy kit you can grab at pretty much any hobby store. It's just a hammer die and all you have to do is put it on your eyelet on the inside and hammer it in. And just like that you have a nice double sided eyelet and then go ahead and repeat this process for all the other marks you made. This process is a little bit time consuming but in the end it looks really nice. Next you're going to be adding in your lace and you can use quarter lace. We ended up going with a shoelace and just start at the bottom and work your way towards the top. And you just want to make sure your lace or your cord is long enough so it reaches all the way to the top. And you can definitely lace this however you want. We just went with a standard lace and it looks pretty cool. And that right there is how you make your lace front. Next we're going to be showing you how to make your hoodie a detachable hoodie. So first you're going to detach the front. So take some de-threaders or some snippers and just snip away that seam. And depending on the look you're going for, you can either leave that bottom edge how it is or roll it over and then do a straight stitch all the way around. And for the video, we're just going to roll it over and do a straight stitch all the way around. And we're rolling it over about a half an inch just to cover up that raw edge. But if you're going for that raw look, go ahead and just leave it and you can skip ahead to the next part. In this part, we're adding in our snaps or our magnet snaps. And for the video, we're using the magnet snaps and we're gonna be putting one in the front, in the middle, and in the back on both sides. 
for a total of five. And we found this is a perfect amount. You can go ahead and add more if you want, but it works really nice when it drapes over the top and around your neck. And again, if you're looking for magnetic snaps like these, we have them in the description. So go ahead and check that out. These magnetic snaps are super easy to use. They go on just like regular snaps. They have that clean outside backing. So all you have to do is use a regular snap die and go ahead and just press that on. And if you don't have a grommet press, these also work with regular plier tools. And as you can see, we added them onto both fronts, both middles and one in the back. And then moving on to the body, we're going to be adding one onto the center back just to start because this will help us be able to attach that hood and start lining it up. Now, once you have that center one on, go ahead and attach your hood and kind of see where it's going to start falling. And this is way easier to do if you have someone try it on or throw it on a mannequin or even put it on yourself. You'll get a better idea on where you want to place that middle and front magnet. So once you have those points marked, go ahead and chalk them on both sides. And here's a little example on where our points lined up. And I don't think ours are going to be the exact as yours, but it's nice just to see a reference. And that's where our magnets ended up falling and we did it for both sides. We added them on and as you can see, they look a little bit big. You can get smaller magnets or smaller snaps. It's totally up to you and the look you're going for. Get custom with it. You can change up the lace, put in different hoodie lace. And as you can see, it's super easy to put on and take off. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you learned a lot from this video. We're going to keep videos coming at you. So definitely leave a like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you have any other ideas you want us to do. We'll definitely get at them. And a huge thanks to Chris Chan. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. Check out unsatisfied.co. And we'll see you next time.